use and it walks you to white. So what you want this millstone round your neck for, I don't know. Well, your mother always wanted a hotel. It was Claridge, you she said, Dad, not Crossroads. Just showing me gratitude. Now we're getting her back on her feet. Back on her feet? Well, she's much better than she was. Yeah, I know. Convalescing, that's the word. She'd convalesce a lot faster if she wasn't giving dinner parties for the staff. She never lifted a finger. It was all brought in. From the chicken ella king to the last profiteroll. roll. With chocolate sauce. This place won't cause her any extra work. She won't have to do the accounting, not this time. She'll have her hands on those books before you can say no. She will not! What do you think of the decor? Yeah, very nice. Very tasteful. A bit like a harlot's boudoir in Manchester. How would you know that, I wonder? Sit down. Mr. Mycroft will be in in a minute. Mr. Mycroft? Oh, you don't mean that clown with a stuffed rat? Yeah, a bit of a mongrel, but appealing. You're developing a very sharp tongue, Debbie. Is he the one, the management trainee? There's an acid edge to your voice. You're losing that sweet note of feminine appeal. If you were going to take on an upper-class tweet, why didn't you ask Daniel? Come in. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. Hello, Debbie. Oh, hello, Charles. You seem deep in thought. Oh, oh hello. Obviously a very interesting letter. Um, no, it's a note from Maggie, actually. Oh, I see. W she had an arrangement. Uh, well, we were going out to dinner together, and now we're not. <laughs> Do you believe her husband has put a lock on the telephone as some sort of device to stop her making calls, and he's the only one that's got the key? Yeah. Did she says here she's terrified you'll think of a chastity belt next. <laughs> what a vulgar woman she is. Not really. Look, I came out to ask you a favour. Yes, of course. Do you think you can give me a lift to Cass Leavington? But all the way from here to the health bar? Oh, no. I've got to go back to Chimney's to get changed and have a bath. Uh, I mean, why do you want a lift? Well, I think there's something wrong with my car. The clutch is slipping or something. It's very peculiar. And I just don't want to be driving it at night. Well, you must take it to the garage. Yes, of course I will, tomorrow. Well, I think I can oblige. What time would you like your chauffeur to arrive? Well, it's an early start, isn't it? So, about, what, quarter to five? Hmm. Uh, we don't want to stay too long, though, do we? What, an hour? Hour and a half at the most? Mm, that's all right. Perhaps you'd like to have a bite of supper, seeing you've been let down. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. Are you heading out for lunch? No, I'm just off up to the rally bar, if you'll excuse me. Do you like the rally bar? Yes, it's my absolute favourite. I'm addicted to all those little matchbox cars crawling up the wall. <laughs> my father has plans to get rid of those. Oh, well, I expect little matchbox fighter planes will be just as interesting. And then Mycroft can sit there in his flying jacket pretending he's big old. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm taking him to the Red Ox Solly Hole for lunch, showing him the ropes. You wouldn't care to come along, would you? Well, I... Say 12.30 for one o'clock? Um... You could do with a bit of red meat inside you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sure you'll find the management side of the Red Ox most interesting. No, I won't. But I'll try to be polite. Whether to plump for the sirloin special or the rump in oyster sauce, that is the question. Spoiled for choice, are you? I'll have my usual. A tropical starter and the deep fried chicken drumsticks. Well? Well what? Are there any questions? Um, obviously not. It seems a very interesting place. Oh, this isn't a place. It's a restaurant. A steakhouse. This is luxury living for the common man. This is where the ordinary bloke can take his wife out for a treat and still have change from 15 pounds. Yes, I see. Make sure your french fries are cut to exactly five centimetres. Always watch the catering staff. If they can get away with less, they will. Got it. <laughs> And in my opinion, the customer always prefers a carrot with a serrated edge at the salad bar. Talking of veg, I think I'll try the braised celery. As for the under-18s birthday special, we can only do the free six-ounce sirloin if the customer has previously filled out a reference card. Oh. The same applies to the over-18s free birthday bottle. I think I will plumb for the sirloin special. And I'll start with the crab and avocado. So, what does one have to do to claim one's birthday plonk? Waiter, 
Yes, you can, Mr. Beach. Well, we can win. Number 17. Oh, table for four. Lovely overlooks the lake. Oh, yes, he does a very nice vegetarian at Sanya. Yes. When did you find out? An hour ago? Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, if you yeah. just turn no, away outside the reception and follow the gravel yeah, really right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hope you have an enjoyable stay. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, I don't know. He can't expect a prince. He was only a part time pianist. Oh, the rain saw him in the hill far. Heard him asking what his present was going to be. He's so puffed up. He's what? He's puffed up. Just because he's got all those kids running around after him all day, calling him sir, he thinks he's Mr. Wonderful. So what are we going to do? Well, I don't know. It's Kath that's going to be embarrassed. Mm, we haven't even got time for a whip round. Well, you wouldn't get much if we aren't. Uh, what are you doing in the next half an hour? Nothing, I suppose. It's my lunch break. Right. Will you do us a favour? Go into Solly Hall and get him a record or a tape or something. <sighs> It'll be a pleasure. Solly Hall on a Saturday afternoon. And for heaven's sake, make it a classical tape. Don't get him Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Hello, Crossroads Motel. Oh, hello, Jill. Are they? Well, has Benny finished wrapping that trolley yet? Will you tell him to get a move on? I don't believe it. He hasn't, has he? Of course, the aim is standardisation with quality. When the customer orders his chicken Kiev, he must know that he's getting the same value for money, whether he's in Brown Hills or Warsaw or even Sutton Coalfield. Yes, of course. Two coffees, please, and a large brandy for Mr. Mycroft. Yes, Mr. Well, Lester. actually, I... Did you like the gatto? Very nice. <laughs> Everything's very nice. Yeah. That Daniel Freeman thinks a lot of himself. You can say that again. Do you know what he did the other day? Some of us are brought up to be polite. Have a bit of consideration for others. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. Do you know what he did with my suitcases? He's got a big shock coming to him. I gave him a what for the other day. He'd got Benny to take all my suitcases over to that Bellevue place. Well, I told him. I said, I'm going to splat your fat nose all over your silly little rodent face. His nose looks all right to me. And I told him never ever to do such a dreadful thing again. He was pretty terrified, Debbie. Pretty damn terrified. Ah, there you are. Two o'clock. I worked through till two o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, Lorraine. Amazing how time flies when you're lunching tete a tete over a lobster thermidor. <laughs> I lost my entire lunch break because of you. I wouldn't mind a cup of tea. You better not wine and dine your girlfriend did my lunch hour again. Nice cup of tea. But your stepmother isn't the boss here anymore. And Mr. Lancaster respects me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You enjoyed your lunch, I hope. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry about the Red Ox. We did try to make it. We? What do you mean, we? Well, the thing is that Fiona dropped her dark glasses down the waste paper towel disposal in the ladies, and uh, quite frankly, she found the prospect of watching Mycroft radiant against the red leather just a little overwhelming. Mr. Freeman, let me be frank. Oh, by all means. Fire away, Miss Lancaster, as all good bombers should. You are rude, ignorant, very, very idle. Look, let me just say this. We found a truly passable fish restaurant in these parts. Do you like lobster? Conceited, arrogant. Do shut up. What? Well, you do go on and on. Do you want the sack? Quite frankly, I couldn't care less. It's called the Forsaken Mermaid. What is? Fish restaurant. And I'm not conceited and arrogant, Miss Lancaster. Or if I am, I can't help it, so there's no point in anybody worrying about it. Would you like to dine there tonight? It really is very nice. Perhaps your father would like to buy it. Change its name to the Forsaken Red Ox and make Mycroft the manager. Tea? Is it true about Mickey? What? He's a minicab driver in London. I have absolutely no idea. Sorry? I have heard from Mickey or thought about Mickey since they carried him off. Oh, oh. What's happening? Are you all right? Yes, yes, of course I am. Let's go down and inspect the damage. Last hurdle, whirling, but soon over. Mia, Donna Parentes. She wouldn't waste your time quoting 
foreign languages out there. Where are Greeks bearing gifts? Oh. The saying goes. Or if it's gifts you're worried about, you can put your mind at rest because a nice Mozart cassette's coming your way. Mozart? Yeah, so be quiet and enjoy yourself. Well, I hope it's not the Requiem because I've got two copies of it already. Oh, Baron Byrne conducting yeah. Prague. Oh. Oh. Good evening, Headmaster. May I introduce Mary, my wife, Stephen Chapman, oh, fellows? How do you do? How do you Poor do? man's just been demoted to run a postal up north. Oh. <laughs> Don't take any notice of him, Mr. Fellows. I sometimes think it's him that ought to be in Boston. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps I should have been, but she kept a close eye on me from an early age. No offence, Mr. Fellows. <laughs> anyway, it's your evening, isn't it? No, we won't let these men steal the show if we can help no. it. No. You've been here a long time, I believe. Yes. Seven years. I should be sorry to leave. And uh, will you be working up now? Oh, good heavens, yes. I'm going to be school matron. Oh, lovely. <laughs> You'll be getting a hundred sons. <laughs> that sounds too much of a good thing. I always wanted a son. For Tommy's sake. But I mustn't grumble. Two lovely daughters. <laughs> In fact, I've seen one of them, the eldest one. Is she going to be here tonight? No, I don't think so. She's dining out at a fish restaurant oh. with a young man. Just as it should be. <laughs> yes. She doesn't seem to go out much with young men. Or even old men, for that matter. Oh, come on, ladies, we mustn't linger, otherwise Mr. Fellows might put us in detention. Go <laughs> on. This is ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous, but these things happen, Jill. How long have you had the car? Three months. Perhaps they sold it to you with 40 tyres. Rubbish, Jill. Anyway, I thought you could afford to buy a new car. Well, suddenly I find I've got more money in my pockets. Mm. I'm going to wonder where we are. Well, never mind. I mean, we'll miss Stephen's speech about the fulfilment of a headmaster's life. It's awfully chilly. Jill, if you're cold, why don't you walk up and down and get yourself warm? Mm. Oh, no. What? What? The jacks disappeared. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, you should stop saying that. I'd forgotten that annoying habit of yours. I mean, it's all rushing back to me. Sorry. I mean, you said it three times in one hour on the honeymoon in Venice. The third time when that bit of dry fruit in my cassata ice cream turned out to be a dead fly. Oh, do stop it. Well, I'm going to have to go back to chimneys and get your jack, aren't I? Back to chimneys? Well, what else am I supposed to do, Jill? Come on, it's only half a mile. I'm going to be dreadfully late for Cass' party. Well, I'm very sorry. You know, I can't walk anywhere. Not in these shoes. I'll ruin them. Jill, why don't you just get in the car, in the wall, and you can listen to the radio. And I shall be back before you know it. The school has an excellent record in the common entrance examination. And I hope to keep it. My old headmaster was like that. And he was A-levels in his case. An absolute obsession. Oh, I got my CFEs in English, geography. That's how you know where the Gambia was. I was fairly impressed when I said, where's the Gambia? And he said, Africa, down the moment's break. I, I, I always thought the Cameroons was a tropical island filled with coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Africa as well, you know. No, that's macaroons. <laughs> oh, what is this to be clever? Oh, I think application is equally important. There's no substitute for hard work. I've always worked hard. You have to work hard where I come from. Because I intend to bring in some changes in the curriculum, of course. Bring in computer studies. I can't start too young. Oh, Kathy, you're going to be up there before you know it, love. Oh, I bought myself a pair of rubber gloves and a kilo of washing soda today. <laughs> then we shall need a new video recorder and uh, new recording equipment for modern languages. It's pretty expensive, of course. I'll tell you what, Stephen, you'll have to do a sponsored run. Yeah. Newcastle and back on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> the capital of Ecuador is Quito. The school has a tradition for taking the boys camping once a year. Oh. You know, out and bound stuff. And the older boys on the continent. You know the sort of thing. Yes. We'll be humping a rack all around France, Mrs. Fellows. <laughs> and all those boys on Leeds after five minutes. She will, you know, you will. She'll make a very, very good matron, you are. Listen, I don't want to interrupt, but shouldn't Anna and Jill be here? Oh, are they, are they coming? Oh, they, uh, they wouldn't miss your leaving party for anything. Uh, I know quite a lot of people who aren't able to make it. And the Assemblies uh, Hall is quite new, paid for by the Old Boys Association. We should be doing Billy Barr next year. Oh, great. I bet no one here knows what the capital of Peru is called. I mean, there's no need to stick to Gilbert and Stunt. Far too many schools do radical, in my view. Ah, oh, you backed out of the party as well, eh? Don't be stupid. I've just had a flat tyre. Oh, you do look a bit oily. And where was my jack when I needed it? Oh, Lord. Now, last Monday, out of the kindness of my heart, Daniel, I mean, just think about it. What do you do when your tyre bursts and you don't have a jack? Well, I'm sorry. I'm really terribly, terribly sorry. Look, I'll, I'll go and get it now. No, it's all right. I've done it. Oh. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I've got to get off to my dinner date with Debbie Dreadful. Sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Lady, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Mrs. Freeman uh, was going to say a few words at this point, but unfortunately uh, she's away. And uh, Mrs. Chance, uh, unfortunately, seems, seems to be delayed. Still, we all know why we're here, and that is to, to say goodbye to a wonderful lady, Kath Fellows, who for many years has been a much valued and much loved member of the Crossroads team. Yeah. I hate to see her go, but it can't be helped. <laughs> I blame, I, I blame, ladies and gentlemen, a certain egghead in our midst. <laughs> the only fella capable of knocking out a tune on the rally bar piano. <laughs> Had he stayed, we might have seen some of those little motor cars falling off the wallpaper, <laughs> but uh, no such luck. He's, he's decided to become a headmaster, and uh, he's taking our Mrs. Fellows with him as matron, so... So there we are. And now, Benny, uh, Benny, uh, bring on the parting gift. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Cat Fellas. Yay! Come on forward, Cat. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Oh, hello, me. Hello, hello. Hi, what's this? <laughs> Stalks on the wrapping paper. Oh, yeah. a bit of a dark horse that has been to you. Oh, did you pick the paper? Oh. You're a good lad, Benny. Good lad. Well, come on, Mrs. Fellows, open it up. Everybody, all my friends at Crossroads, it's marvellous. Oh. I, shall, I shall think of you every time I use it. <laughs> and let us not forget the pianist. Yes. Sorry I'm late, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I think I can guess what this is. Manual and his music of the mountains. Oh. But very, very kind of you. I'm sure you'd like to have it played for you, Mr. Fellows. Uh, Benny, dear. To put it on for Mr. Fellows. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Lancaster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been Mozart. Well, the words begin with M. That's about the same to Anne Marie. Oh, don't worry, Diane. It's lovely, isn't it, Steve? Very, very kind. Well, it's a good job she's not here if you ask me. I can just see the headlines now, can't you? Headmaster calls him full-time <laughs> music drama. Oh, I like it. It's very, very kind. Yeah, but said that twice. It's all right. <laughs> How did you like me? Ash over there. Oh, best behaviour. Oh, oh. My leaving party. Don't remind me, Jill. Oh, I am going to miss you. I really am. been visiting the Crossroads Motel here on UK Gold. Next stop, Dynasty.